never ever did I think I would be making a video like this. Hendrix has had strep for about a week. He now has RSV, so he is currently in the hospital. Gus is with him. I've been there since about 11 a.m. today, and I am just packing bags because the doctor said you could be here anywhere from three days to a week. And so I'm like, the only thing I'm thinking is I'm like, he's fighting strep and RSV. And like, those are probably the some of the worst combinations that you could put together because it's all in the same area. I am so stressed out. I'm freaking out. But yeah, I'm gonna finish grabbing all of our stuff. I do want to stop by Walmart. Hendrix is so cute. He asked for fries, so my mom went and got him fries. And then now his new request is he really wants chips. So I'm gonna go grab him some chips, maybe find him like a new... Hot Wheel or like monster truck, anything really. Just something to cheer him up, something new. Um, I'm trying to, you know, make him comfortable because like I said, I have a feeling we're gonna be there for a while. You have more monster trucks? Yeah, well, well, train. Oh, you want me to get your train monster truck? Okay, let's yeah. see. Oh, thank you for asking so nicely. Look what I found. <laughs> yeah, is it your train monster truck? Scary. Where is he gonna go? Uh, home. Oh, he's gonna go home? Uh -huh. I left that one at home, sweetheart. Mama was trying to hurry so I could get back to you as fast as I could. Okay. Is that okay? But do you know what? We're gonna get you all better and then you can go home and play with your school bus. Okay. Does that sound okay? Hi. And all your cars? Okay. They're at home. I only brought your monster trucks and your trains. Okay. Do you want an M&M? No. Well, what kind of candy it's would you like? Bright. It's bright. It's bright. Are you tired? Yeah. You can rest your eyes, baby. This is where I pop in to kind of talk about what's been going on, why he's in the hospital, that type of thing. If we backtrack a little bit, Hendrix was really, really sick for like a solid two months it started out with pink eye i feel like he might have had something after that and then he got strep so i took him in for that and then after about a week or so of him having that he ended up getting rsv so i was actually at work when this happened i was at work gus had texted me and he was like hey like i'm taking hendrix to the hospital at the time gus was dating a girl and he was very 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 cold towards me um so I was pretty upset that I'm like, okay, you're literally just nonchalantly telling me that you're taking my child to the hospital. I left work, went straight to the ER, and Hendrix did not look well at all. He had a rash all over his body. Um, he was extremely pale. The way he was breathing, it was like, typically when they breathe, I think it's like out of their, like, it was like belly breathing or something. I don't know. But he just, he was not breathing like he normally should have been. And he was coughing just not himself he did not look good at all they did i think like three different tests strep still came back positive rsv came back positive they were doing x-rays like just all this stuff was super overwhelming to me and that is when i actually ended up calling my mom because gus had his girlfriend there and like he showed absolutely no support to me like i was a mess i was bawling like pacing in circles like i didn't i didn't know what to do so i ended up calling my mom and i'm so incredibly thankful that she was willing to be there. I mean, I don't know why she wouldn't be like, she's my mom. She's there for support. But that's just a little backstory. Hendrix was very sick, and I firmly believe, this could be far-fetched, but the person Gus was living with wasn't the cleanest. Like, his girlfriend just wasn't the cleanest. There was like five or six kids over there at a time, and I've never, ever have seen Hendrix so sick. I mean, this is the first time he's been hospitalized, so that right there is saying something. But, getting on to the video, I wanted to share this clip with you. This was the first day that we were in the hospital, and I kind of just wanted to share a raw clip with you to show just how quickly his oxygen would drop. That was like the main thing that hospitalized him for so many days, which is because he could not keep his oxygen at a stable number. I mean, it would be like in the 90s, and then it would drop to like 74 which it could be worse, but it's still worrisome. So that is what this clip is. Let's go. Yep, I got your popsicle. Oh, we gotta take your mask off though a little bit. Just a little bit, not all the way. Oh, okay. Okay, do you wanna hold it? Okay, you can take a couple licks and then we gotta put your mask. 
I know. We'll put it back on. You take a couple licks, and then we gotta put it's it back heavy. on. It's heavy. It is heavy. You got it. You got it. There you go. Does it taste like grape? Mmm, it's good. It's good. We'll just have to keep an eye on your oxygen, bud, because it's already dropping a little bit. Oh, uh, what? It's all wet. Yeah, we gotta put your oxygen back on, okay? Uh, I'll let. I'll let. Okay. Here, we gotta come put this on Where's for just go? a second. Hold on. Yeah, we gotta put this on just for uh. a second. Hey, take a lick. And then we gotta put it back on for just a second. Just a second, okay? Kay. Good job. Okay. Let's get that number back up for a second, okay? Yeah. And hold on. We're just waiting for your number to go back up because it's, it's really low right now. And then from there, things were very rough. I was there by myself. Gus didn't want to stay. Like I said, he was just very cold towards me. That's probably like the best way that I could put that is that he was just extremely cold. And like it was either he is there or I am there. We couldn't, we couldn't co-parent during that time. That just wasn't an option. It wasn't a thing. And it was just because his girlfriend did not like the idea of him and I being in the same room alone together for whatever reason. She was very insecure. And I'm not trying to tear her down because, like, I've been there. I know what it's like to be insecure when you're with a guy. But she just, like, <sighs> she has a kid, so she knows what it's like. But she just couldn't put that aside that I was in the picture. Like, I am his mom. I am in the picture. It's day two, and we have been moved out of the ICU. They didn't say why. They didn't say if it was because he's progressing or, like, what. They were literally just like, well, we're moving you to regular pediatrics. So, that's about all that I know. They came and gave him some medicine for his strep. And they also gave him some Tylenol to hopefully um, help break his fever. And he also seemed really flushed. And so, we're just kind of hoping that Tylenol will make him a little bit more comfortable. We're in such a smaller <laughs> room. However, this one does have a bathroom. I did not show you guys our previous room, but like it obviously had his bed and then there was just like a sink and a toilet all in one room, like no privacy, no nothing. Um, oh, and a couch, there's a couch in there. Day two comes around and they, like I said, they transferred us to normal pediatrics. We were in the pediatric ICU, but they transferred us and honestly from there, it was kind of just a waiting game to see if his oxygen was gonna stable out, if so, for how long. Hendrix had a bath this night and like he had so little energy that he didn't even enjoy his bath. And this is a kid that like could spend a half hour, 45 minutes in the bath and like still not wanna get out. But after like being in there for two minutes, he was just ready to get out and get back in bed. I have Hendrix's oxygen mask back on because he was dropping to about 87. So I made sure to put that back on him. I think I'm probably going to get him some food. I'm just waiting for Gus to get here. Go get him some food. No. No. I know. You haven't had much of an appetite, huh? And they just came and gave him some Tylenol and something for his strep. This part's pretty self-explanatory. He was supposed to be discharged, but then his oxygen had dipped. Um, his fevering has kind of subsided by this point. They were able to get that under control. I do remember the night that we were supposed to get discharged, the nurse was like, you know, he hasn't gone to the bathroom in a while. He could very well be very dehydrated if he doesn't urinate in the next like hour or so. We're going to have to start an IV. So I was very much pushing fluids. He was doing really great with drinking Gatorade. Um, I really honestly had no worry with him being dehydrated considering he was fevering so much and so high that he was probably just sweating all the fluids out so i really wasn't too concerned about that um but it was a very very big stressor because i'm like oh my gosh we went from maybe being discharged to now he has to get an iv we could be here another day i just want to go home i want my baby to be better guys choo choo trains and i put blaze in for him to watch <coughs> getting all settled for the night. I think this is day three. Tomorrow's gonna be day four. Um, the days are starting to blend together a little bit. We were supposed to be discharged tonight, but his oxygen dropped when he was napping um, to about 84 to 86. Decided to keep us, which I'm, I wanna go home. I wanna go home so bad, but 
I much rather him be here and be monitored. That way I know his oxygen is at a good level than sending him home and have something happen. So I was going back and forth a lot with getting Hendrix like trains, cars, whatever he asked for just to keep him comfortable and entertained. It was really hard to distract him. All of his trains. Earthy. You wanna see? Who's that? Oh, that's me. That is you. You can show him your train. <laughs> that is such a cool train. What color is it? That's an orange. That is orange. You are so smart. You found another train. What color is that one? Orange. Uh, it's green. It's green. Green train. Oh, you want to show him that one too? I'm so sorry. There you go. What color is that one? The black. That's right. Do you know where your Thomas is? Yes. Is Thomas right here? Check it, check it, check it, check it, check it. Thomas! Oh, oh. So far, his vitals are looking okay. His oxygen has been at about 90. It's dipped to about 88 a few times in the past hour. Um, I have a feeling he'll need his oxygen tonight at some point. Um, I know he did last night and he did during his nap. So, we'll see how he does. I'm hoping that tonight will be our last night. Um, but it could be another couple days. It's just a matter of how his body Look. responds. What? Banana. You want a banana? Okay, I can get your banana. You can tell it's been sitting for a minute. Here's your banana. Oh, you're making me feel it too. Hey, you should go take a bite. Oh, oh my goodness. <laughs> what are you doing? You're so silly. The next morning rolls around, his pediatrician comes in and he's like, how would you guys like to go home? I was like, uh, yes, I'm not even gonna argue on that one. He's like, his oxygen looks great. He was able to keep it stabilized throughout the entire night and there's no need to start an IV. Like, just keep him on fluids, you'll be fine. You ready to go home? Yeah. <coughs> My big cough, we're gonna eat some breakfast and get our stuff together and we're gonna go home. Yeah, we're gonna go home. Okay. Okay. Do you want some more bread? Yeah. yeah. I can't help it. He keeps saying that he's cold. I don't more. like it. You don't like it? Do you want more bread? <coughs> you want juice? Okay. Thank you. You're welcome. better. Yeah. Did you want more bread or yogurt? Yeah. Which one would you like? More bread? Do you got it or you want help? Got it. Good job. I'm so happy to see you eat today. Oh. Well, it's okay. Did you want the crust off? Yeah. Yeah, here, just take a bite right here. Take a big bite right there. Oh, good job. Here. And take a bite right here. There you go. I think the biggest thing that I was really afraid of was not having that monitor to see what his level was for oxygen. I was like, oh my gosh, what if it drops and I don't know? What if it gets really low and I don't know? It was kind of dumb of me to rely so much on that freaking monitor to tell me what his oxygen was. Obviously, I'm thankful for it, but... It also was a little scary to go home, but he pulled through. He was great, except for, I think, two or three days later, he got a really, really bad ear infection. If you know anything about RSV, there's a lot of mucus, and so I think that just really contributed. I was a little frustrated that the hospital didn't even think to look for that, like, considering he was fevering, he's got so much mucus, like, it's bound to happen in a sense, but they just didn't check for it, and sure enough, like, he got a very, very, very bad ear infection. Gus ended up leaving his girlfriend, and sure enough, Hendrix has been healthy as can be since that day. And like, I swear to you, and it could just be a coincidence, but I swear to you, like, it was just that house and all those kids. I don't know. I don't know. With that being said, I don't really know that there's too much I could add into this vlog. I know some of you did ask some questions on my last video. I will probably answer that in my next video, which I'm working on editing as we speak. Well, I'm 
filming this, but then I'll be editing that. So thank you guys, as always, for your support. I have a very exciting video coming out next, so be on the lookout for that. Thank you guys for watching, and I will see you in our next video.